this video, we're going to try out the table view component that was released in Qt 5.12. This component basically allows you to show the data in your models in a table in Qt Quark. This component is not perfect yet. There are a few things that still require a lot of effort to do using it, but it is getting there and I think it's pretty usable if you happen to have a project that is using it. One feature that I really like about this table is that you can show an infinite table. Let's say that you have a model with 2000 rows and 2000 columns. This table view components allows you to show this table and you can scroll around to show the components that weren't visible to show them. And when items fall out of the view, the memory that they were using is reclaimed and used to show the components that fall in the view area. I know this might be cryptic. We're going to go to Qt Creator and play with this a little more. Here we are in Qt Creator. We're going to create a new project. It's going to be a Qt application, a Qt quick one. We're going to save it in a location on our drive, give it a name. I'm going to call mine table view test. You can call it whatever you want. Hit next, choose make as our build system. We're going to choose the latest version of Qt. We're going to choose the kit we want to use and finish. Now we can actually come here in our Qt quick file and type table view, you see that it is available. It comes as part of the Qt quick module and to use it, let's select it and hit F1 to open the documentation for it. We're going to go in full help mode and look at it. Okay, they say it has a model that defines the data to be displayed and a delegate that defines how the data should be displayed. And uh, this is how you define your model. You see that at the moment, to be able to take advantage of it, you're going to have to dig a little bit in C++. Once you define your model in C++, you're going to come in Qt Quick and uh, create a table view and attach a model to it. It is this simple. So the way we're going to play with this, we're going to create our C++ class, which is going to be a table model. And we're going to expose it to be used in Qt Quick like this. So let's do that. We're going to add a new C++ class. It's going to be called table model. Right now we want to make it inherit Q object. We're going to change this in a little bit. Finish and let's close this. Let's go to the header. We want to include a class that we're going to inherit. Let's copy it and put it here because it is the one we are inheriting Q abstract table model. Let's go to the CPP file and actually change this to be inheriting Q abstract table model. We can actually go back to our documentation and copy the things they have in here. You see that we have a bunch of methods that we need to put in for our model to be legit. I'm going to copy them, come back to our code and paste them in here. I'm going to control A, control I to align these things. And for readability, I want to refactor these methods to be in the CPP file. Let's do that. We're going to refactor move definition in CPP. I'm going to repeat the same steps, refactor, move definition in CPP, do the same for the data method. Let's go back and move the role names method. And if what we do here is not clear, you should really look at the basic tutorials that we have on how to interface between your C++ and Qt Quick. This is an advanced topic of how you use your custom models. And we talk about these two things extensively. If you are interested, do come to our school here. The link is going to be shared in the description below. You can start from scratch, learn about Qt, C++, GUI development. You can learn Qt Quick, and you can even learn how to interface between C++ and Qt Quick. Okay, we have the row count method, which is going to define how many rows we have. We have the column count method, which is going to define how many columns we're going to have in the table. We have the data method that is going to return the data that we want to display. And we have the role names method which allows us to define our custom rules to be used in Qt Quack. If you look at the method, there is really nothing complicated. We have 200 rows, 200 columns. We return the current column and the current row to be displayed as our data. 
And we have a role that is display that relates to the data that we have in here. This is our model and I think it is complete for now. What we want to do is come to the main CPP file and include our table model and register it to be usable in Qt Quick. Let's go back to the documentation. There is a piece of code we can copy to register our thanks. It is this line here. Let's copy it. Come back to main CPP and put it right here. This basically exposes the table model class to be instantiable and usable in Qt Quick. And it is going to be available as table model. Now we can go to QML and put in our model. Let's go to the documentation and actually copy a few things because they have everything defined for us in there. We can copy the table view here. Let's copy at the entire thing. Let's replace that to be usable here. You see that table model is not recognized. It is because this is a custom type. And to use it, we need to import it because it was exposed here. There is another line that imports that for us, so I don't want to type it. I'm just going to copy from the documentation. Let's go to QML and import that. Again, if this is scripted, you should look at the courses that we have on interfacing between C++ and Qt Quick. These things are explained extensively in there. Okay, we have our table model. We have our table view. And the model is exposed as a table model that we put in here directly. We have a delegate inside. It has a width of 100 and a height of 50. And the text that is going to be displayed is going to be the display role that we defined in the role names method. Now I think we can run the application and actually see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You see that we have our application and you see that we can scroll it around until we reach the 199th row and 199th column. I don't know if you see the numbers here, but we can scroll to go to the end of this thing. Let's go there actually to show you that it is possible. 199, 199. We can scroll back to show everything we have in the table here. And you see that this is pretty cool if you have huge data sets that you want to show in a small screen area. Now, I had a few students ask, how can I show headers using this table view here. The thing is, there is no official way to show headers on your table here. You basically have to go in C++ and cook up your own way to display the headers in the data that you have in here. And I am going to show you one way we are using for our application and you can use it if you like it. But before we do that, I want to show you a way you can uh, make this table a little better. For example, you can come in QML again and show borders on the delegate rectangle here. So for example, we're going to say border color. Let's make it black and uh, say border width and do two pixels. Let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. You see that we have the borders. Black is not defined because we didn't put that in quotes. I like to make this mistake. Sorry for that. Okay, we have our thing here. Another thing we can do, we can increase the font of this text. So we can say font point size and say 12, for example. Let's see how this looks. Mm -hmm. We can also center that to make this look better. We can say anchors center and parent. Let's run again. And this is much better, isn't it? Okay, now you know how to do this. Thanks. If you happen to need borders, these are a few things you can touch to make your data show up a little bit better. Now I want to show you how you can show headers in your table view if you happen to need that. The first thing I want to do is go back to C++ and model the data that we want to show in our table view. That's the first thing we should do. So we're going to model that as a vector of vectors. We're going to put in a private section and say Q vector. It's going to be a vector of vectors and it's going to be a vector of strengths. We are going to call this table. And the other thing I want to do is to go in the CPP file and actually populate the table here with data. So 
I am going to paste in a bunch of data that I had prepared. I don't wanna type all this. And you can see that we have a bunch of columns. We have the first name column, we have the last name column, we have the age, profession, and a bunch of other pieces of data that we want to show. And we have the data for these columns in here. We are storing this as a vector of vectors. It's a two-dimensional data structure that we put in here to just show you how you can show the table in the table view. So how do we do this? The first challenge that we have is to let the table view know that it is dealing with the header here and not the data content that we have in the remaining rows here. How do we do that? We are going to define two different roles. Let's go to the header and put in an enum that is going to define the two roles that we have here. We have the table roles enum here, and we have a table data role and the heading role. Table data is going to be the data content that we have here. For example, John Doe here is the data content, and the heading role is going to be for the heading here. When the table view sees the heading role, it's going to know that it is a heading, and it's going to display it differently then it shows the table data role. I hope this makes sense. So now that we have this role, we have to go to the implementation of the roles method and change it to be aware of the roles that we just defined. We are going to modify it, take this out and put in our new implementation. Let's take this out. And you see that we expose table data role as table data in Qt Quick and heading role as heading in Qt Quick. So we're going to use this in Qt Quick to help us differentiate between heading and table data content. Now we want to modify the data method to return different pieces of data depending on the role that we are dealing with. The role is going to come from the parameters that this method is going to be called with. This is not going to be very different. So let's take this out and put in a piece of code that I have prepared to save on typing. So we are basically switching on the role, checking to see if it is a table data role. When it is the table data role, we're going to return the data at the given row and column in our table here. You see that, for example, if we want to return this Jane here, it is going to be at this row and this column here. This is what we are kind of doing in the data method here. If it is a heading role, we are really interested in knowing if this is a heading or if it is not a heading. If it is row zero, which is going to mean that it is a heading here, the heading row is the first row. So we're going to return true if it is row zero and return false if it is another row, which is not zero. And this is how we're going to know if it is a heading. So when we get in QML, we are just going to check if heading is true. And if it is true, we're going to know that it is going to be a heading. If it's false, we're going to know that it is not a heading and we're going to display it differently than we do for the heading. You're going to see this in a minute. The remaining thing is to change the row count and column count method. We don't want to use these hard coded values. We want to return the actual row count and column count in our table here. So the row count is going to be the number of items in the table here. So we're going to say return table size. And for the column, we're going to return table at zero, for example, and return size. This is going to give us the number of columns. Now we can go to QML and change how we display the data. Note now that the row has changed from what we had before. So the data that we want to display for now is the table data. Okay, let's double check again and see that it is what we have. Table data, go back to QML and put that in here. We can actually try this and see that it works. We can run the application and see what we get. Mm -hmm. See that we have first name, last name, profession, marital status, and city. You see that these things are here but they are a little cramped here. So we should increase the width of our data. Let's go to QML and make the width at least 150. Run again. 
this is much better, isn't it? First name, last name, age, profession, marital status, and things like that. So we want to display the heading differently than we display the data content here. All we need to do is color the background of this rectangle differently based on whether it is a heading or not. So what we're going to do, we're going to say color. We're going to check and see if heading equals to true. If it is true, we're going to make the color red. If it isn't, we're going to make the color green. How about this? Let's run the application and see what we get. Mm -hmm. You see that the heading now is colored differently from what we have in the data content here. And just by putting in a different role for the heading and the data content, you can be able to display the data differently in your application. This is cool, isn't it? This might be helpful to people who have difficulties displaying the heading in the table view component that we have for now. This is probably going to change in a few upcoming Qt versions. They are most probably going to give you a way to specify your heading directly in QML here without going to mess with C++. But for now, this is very helpful if you happen to need this very much. You can see that this is very practical and usable even on mobile devices where you don't have a lot of space. Another thing I want you to see before we close this video is that you can know when your item stops to be visible or if your item just jumped in the visible area of the screen. And all you have to do is come to the table view component. Actually, let's go into documentation and show you the signals that you need to use. It is the pulled signal that is emitted when your item is out of the visible area of the screen and the reused signal is emitted when your item is back in the visible area of the screen. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in our delegate here and say table view on pulled, it is a signal. So we're going to say console log table data, say pulled, and we're going to do the same for reused. We're going to say console log, This is going to do. You're going to know when an item falls out of the screen or if the item is back in the visible area of the screen. And you might need to know when these things happen to kind of save or reload pieces of data that relate to these items in here. If you need this, this is how you do this. This is all I had for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If any of the things we used in the video didn't make sense, do consider to come to our school here and you're going to find more courses on Qt. Depending on where you are, you might want to learn Qt C++, Qt Quick, or even how you interface between C++ and Qt Quick. And if you happen to have a request for a video tutorial, do tell us and we might put it on our to-do list. This is all for today. I'll see you next time.